great to see you here again. We are continuing our videos related to formal decision making. Before we looked at the decision making under certainty, here we are looking at decision making under uncertainty. Now, in these elements, we're going to look at some examples and each example will be used to explain the different topic, the different way to make a decision. Remember that we said when we looked at decision making, you have to find all the elements. And one of the last elements to select is to select a method. And here we are going to look at the methods to make a decision when we consider elements of uncertainty. Uh, we look at the same uh, project that we did before. We again want to start a new business. We're looking at different locations. And for every location, we have evaluated with the marketing team what the expected profits or losses will be. Now, in this case, we consider three possible states, high, medium and low sales volumes. So we are considering what is happening, what are the possibilities, what will the profit and loss be for those different locations when we have these events, these sales volumes related events. We have the same table as before. We looked at the locations Antwerpen, Prague, Berlin and New York. And we have the sales results, the profits for high, medium and low sales volumes. For example, we can look at Prague. We have in high sales volumes, we estimate a profit of 350K. When we have medium sales volumes, we have like 150K and low, it's like minus 100K. Now, what we are going to do here, for example, or how can we estimate uh, these high, medium and low volumes? For example, high could be like tourist season when the sales volumes are expected to be high. Uh, we have medium sales volumes when the average people, or let's say not really tourists are there, but there is a low uh, number of tourists coming to Prague. And when we have low, for example, it's when the people are going typically to different places when there are not so many tourists visiting uh, Prague. We can find out that we can find statistics about the people, how many people are there. Uh, when we look at a ski area, we can say a high, um, let's say high sales volumes would be when there are the school holidays, medium would be the ski season outside of these holidays and low volumes would be at the beginning or at the end of the season where basically uh, it's not really sure there will be snow or at the end of the season where the snow can be melting, less possibilities, also less people are traveling. So that's basically the elements that we have. And when we are looking at the decision methods under uncertainty, we always have to add the step do nothing or do not change. And we find a new table at the bottom. We find do nothing where we have in this case, zero K. There are no sales volumes. There is no profit. Uh, we don't do anything. So we can basically not lose anything. However, we have to be uh, careful when we look at do not change. Uh, it can be that we have an existing situation and our decision making is about changing that, uh, let's say, to a new situation. And then we have to compare with the existing situation. So do nothing zero or some values that we already have. We will see later an example in a decision tree where we consider that we do not change the existing situation. The first thing to do is to look at the different decision methods under uncertainty. And under uncertainty, we have in fact four different possibilities that we consider. First of all, we have what we call maximax or an optimistic estimate. In this case, we are basically optimistic and we assume that the sales volumes will be high. And of course, in that column, we will select the solution which has the highest profit. We also have minimax or a pessimistic estimate. We assume that the sales volumes will be low. So here again, we take the highest value from the column 
of the low sales volume. A third solution is Laplace or the average. We take here the average. We don't take a weighted average. We take a normal average. So all the elements have the same weight and we calculate the expected monetary value for all these different uh, solutions, possible solutions, these different locations. The last method is a little bit, uh, a little bit different. It's least regret. Uh, we look at the decision we have made and let's say we made a decision and what if there would be low, medium or high sales volume? How does our decision fit into that situation? So basically I will see if I select, for example, Antwerpen and I say, uh, okay, I have high sales volumes. What's the, pos what's the position of Antwerpen compared to the others? If I find a town for which the sales volumes or the profit would be higher, in that case, I would have a regret because I could have had a better solution. On the other hand, when I see that the solution I've selected in that condition is the highest, then my regret is zero. And what I do over all these different events, high, medium and low, I add the regret. And of course, when we talk about regret, we want to have the regret as low as possible. So these are the methods that we will be looking at step by step. And now let's start with the Maximax. Maximax, like I said, is an optimistic view. And we look at the column with the high sales volumes. And what we see there, this is the yellowish column. And we see that the highest here is New York, USA. So we have well, 1 million and 50,000. This case, Maximax, New York is the selection that we make. So the optimistic approach gives us a solution that New York is the best location to start a business. On the other hand, we can also look at the pessimistic, which is the minimax. And now we consider that the sales volumes are low. And what we notice here is that most of them are negative. So basically, when there are low sales volumes, we expect to have losses in all those locations. And yes, do nothing in this case is the best solution. Now, will we do nothing? Probably not. We just found out that in this case, those four possibilities are not exactly what we want. They are not good, so we will not select them. And basically, we will find another solution. We have to find another project to invest our money. Now we look at Laplace. Laplace is the normal average. And what we look at the table, now we calculate the expected monetary value and the expected monetary value is in fact the average of the values in high, medium and low. And the easiest one to calculate is do nothing because the average of zero plus zero plus zero is of course zero. You don't have to have a degree in whatever signs, zero plus zero plus zero divided by three is still zero. But now let's look at Antwerpen. Antwerpen, what we have, we look at the expected monetary value and we take the average of 450, 150 and minus 50 and we divide it by 3. And basically we find 183.3k. We could also say 183, one decimal, two decimals. It's not really a big problem. We do the same for Prague. So we have 350 plus 150 minus 100 divided by 3 gives 133.3k. Now we calculate the average for Berlin, which is the average of 650k, 250k and minus 350k, which gives us a total of 183.3k. We finish the same for New York and there we find an average of 316.7k. 
that concludes our calculations and now we can see in the table we see the expected monetary values using the formula of Laplace that again New York USA is the best solution because it has the highest expected monetary value. Now we're going to look at the solution of least regret and this is a little bit more difficult because we have to deal with the event a regret and we have to find out what is the regret that we have in all these possibilities. So what we basically do we first look at the column high and we identify that in this case New York gives us the highest profit. This means that when I select New York I don't have any regret so my regret is 0k. Now for the other ones what are you going to do? Now try to find or stop the video and try to find the regrets for all these other towns, those other projects when the sales volumes are high and then start the video again. So let's have a look. Antwerpen we have 450k so if I selected Antwerpen I would make, make 450k but I could have made 1050. So basically I have here the max minus 450k is the regret. I could have made 600k more. The same with Prague 350, 1050. When I make the difference I find 700k. So when I would have selected Prague and it would be a high sales volumes then I would have had a regret of 700k. For Berlin 400k and do nothing well in this case I lose the full 1050k. So this is basically the overview for the high sales volumes when I consider least regret. The next thing to do is to do the same with the medium sales volumes. And again here New York is the highest. So we see New York USA for medium sales volumes as 450k which means that all the others are in fact lower. Basically I can say again that for New York USA I have for the medium sales volumes a regret of zero. And now I go again to Antwerpen 450 minus 150 is 300. For Prague we are the same so it's also 300. For Berlin I have 200 and for doing nothing I have 450. So now we have the results also for high, medium and low and I'm sure you can continue this now without any problems. But let's continue. The last one is a little bit tricky because now the best one in low sales volumes is do nothing. And of course the regret there is also do not is 0k. Do nothing is the highest profit. We don't have any profit, we don't have any loss, but all the others are negative. So now I'm looking at comparing Antwerpen, Prague, Berlin and New York with do nothing. So basically when I have the minus 50k I have a regret of 50k because I wouldn't have done anything. I would not have lost my 50k. Same for the 100. I lost 100 but if I wouldn't have done it I would have let's say made 100 so my regret is 100k. For Berlin the same thing my regret would be 350k and for New York it would be 550k. So basically we calculated the regrets of the different solutions in the different states in high medium and low. What we are going to do now is to add the regrets and the regret is in fact the sum of all the regrets. So I have 600 plus 300 plus 50 is 950. We do the same for Prague and we find 1100. For Berlin we have 400 and 200 and 350 so that's 950. For New York we find 550k and for do nothing 
I find 1500k. So now the principle is basically the least regret. And the least regret means that in this case, I will select New York again because that shows me the lowest regret. These were the different elements that I wanted to show you about this part, this types of decision making. We had the maximax, the minimax, the Laplace, and the least regret methods. Now, in the next session, what we will be looking at is adding some probability to the events. What is the probability that a certain event will happen? And here we will be talking about what we call decision method uh, or decision making methods under risk. You did a good job. Let's continue. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you and bye-bye.